Hello. So I'm still quite sick. I figured I would build a stock rover and show you you can get basically the same kind of performance out of stock parts. So this particular rover is built to be expanded upon according to your mission specific needs. That's why there's so much uh, mounting space here. Uh, I'm using a command pod. You can switch this out for seats if you'd like, but just for testing purposes, a command pod starts with a Kerbal in it, so I, uh, I prefer them. I'm using these rover wheels. Uh, they have really terrible traction, which matters a lot here on Kerbin. Uh, but out on the out on out on the moon and such, they work great. But the reason I'm using them is just because I wanted some more ground clearance, and I didn't want to have to tip these or add in any more uh, structural elements. The more structural elements you have involved in your wheelbase, the worse it will react to physics acceleration, especially if you're using um, struts. Struts and physics do not get along well. So I'm using a very simple structure that has very, very few moving parts. Uh, and all six of the wheels go down to the same core component here on the body, which means that I won't have to worry about the body building up any kind of vibration or oscillation or bending. Uh, I'm also using the older SAS rather than the newer SAS because it's lighter and there's no other difference in this new version of Kerbal. So let's go ahead and drive around and see how it runs. Now, as I said, it's got really terrible um, uh, traction and that uh, that's kind of unfortunate, but uh, it'll work out fine. Uh, we don't need to have really good traction here. Um, but if you do have bad traction, you need to be uh, careful with your physics, because at the higher level of physics, you have less and less traction. So bad traction becomes no traction uh, as you as you go up towards physics multiplic multiplication four. So um, this, as you can see, works fine at maximum physics rates. Uh, and you might think that, you know, I'd have to worry about bouncing off of things or whatever, but I'm going to go ahead and, and jump this and show you that it's really not an issue. See? Um, and so you don't have to worry too much about, uh, uh, about the undercarriage here. It's got a low undercarriage, which is uh, going to cause you trouble if you're moving at 30 meters per second or faster, but these wheels will break apart at 30 meters per second. Uh, so generally speaking, if you've got these wheels, you're not going to have to worry about that anyway. And you can just go ahead and deal with your low undercarriage as you prefer. Um, if you needed a higher undercarriage, you could certainly you could certainly get one without too much effort. Uh, if you're on the moon, you'll want to have RCS, and there's plenty of space to mount RCS here, uh, any place you'd like really. I just didn't do that because on Kerbal it's added, a uh, Kerbin, it's just added weight without any added uh, use. Um, and when you have low traction, added weight is a terrible idea. And now we're going up a hill, so I'm going to reduce my physics rate just so that I can uh, uh, get more traction as I'm going up this hill. And, uh, um, am I going to make it? Uh, yep, I am. But man, that was not easy. Uh, the, Rove Ma the Rove Max wheels that I'm using now don't have any traction, but the ruggedized wheels have a lot of traction. So if you're going to run around at a higher speed up hills and stuff, you'll want to use those, not because they resist impact any better. I don't actually think they do. I break them just as easily, but mostly because they can go up hills at high physics rates. Um, on foreign worlds, I find that these actually work a little bit better just because they give you more clearance, and on uh, low-gravity environments, clearance is more important than traction. So is there anything interesting around? I thought there were trees over here, but I guess they're way over there. I don't know. You can see that at four, at level four physics, at, at four times physics, I basically just slide down the hill. These things have no traction. That's fine though. Let's go ahead on, over to those bumpy parts and I'll show you that it works fine. Um, so you can do this with stock parts. You don't have to have the cool parts that I have. And even the cool parts that I have uh, weren't going that much faster than this on Kerbin. Kerbin is not a very fast environment because of its very high physics, uh, very high gravity level. Um, a lot of people will do things like add in wings uh, and uh, stuff like that, and you can actually get some better speed out of those. Uh, if you're going to add something in, though, I would recommend the B9 Aerospace's uh, intake atmosphere uh, RCS, because then you can put RCS in the back and an atmosphere intake somewhere, and that will allow you to use those for more forward momentum uh, when you're going up a hill. 
and uh, and since it's intake atmosphere, you don't have to have any RCS monopropellant tanks. You can just use the intake atmosphere tank, uh, intake atmosphere, and not worry about tanks at all. Uh, and those work great, but I needed to make this out of stock, and that's not stock. All right, so we're getting towards the top of the hill, and that means I can turn physics acceleration back up. Oh nope, not that high. There we go. Man, there's no traction at four times physics on Kerbin. Whee! Oh, time to go down a hill. Ready? Yeah! Woo there we are. That's the low carriage in action. All right, that's enough.